nothing says good morning like a pulse off. All right, so let's just start off real quick with what's up. So, here, I'll back that out a little bit so you can see. But if you look right there, I've got a busted housing. I got a lot of good things to say about the Husky battery pole saw. I'm telling you, this thing is a third of the weight of a traditional steel pole saw, and it will do just about everything that a gas powered unit will do. Um, the trade off of this being so wonderfully light and well balanced is that it's fragile. It's, you know, you cut a limb and the head comes down to the ground and bounces, it's not going to be able to take that kind of leg. Here's the main housing that we're gonna to replace today. And I can't give you an idea of how light this is, but this probably weighs like maybe three ounces, four ounces. Um, and this is my whole crash bag. Each one of the crews has a battery pole saw. And, you know, as long as you really take good care of it, they're fine, but uh, they won't take too much of a bounce. So let me get this torn apart a little bit and I'll show you what we're gonna do. And uh, you know, the first couple of times you do these, they're a little aggravating, but uh, I don't have my tripod with me. So we'll have to do uh, short spurts. All right, so that appears to be thoroughly broken and in need of some replacement parts. Um, now that the side cover's off, there's four bolts that hold this on and uh, a couple that hold the oil tank on. So we're gonna make a mess. I'll get this all tore down and uh, show you on the other side yeah. we've just got this cute little uh, wiring harness these get really firm and they have to go through right here when they're new they're nice and flexible but they really stiffen up with the heat and oil and everything else so it's kind of a tricky thing to get them to slide back through here as we're going to be replacing this broken part and we'll check everything else while we're in here so if you're watching this video, it's usually for one of two things. You actually want to know how to rebuild this or replace or work on this or just the sheer value of my entertainment and quick wit. So here's one of the wear items. Be prepared. If you dig into this, you're going to have this issue. They had this metal worm gear for the oiler. And, you know, every time you take a piece and part off of this, have some compressed air ready because it's amazing how much grime and dirt gets into every little nook and cranny. But this worm gear right here is made out of plastic and it is very prone to wearing those teeth out and it quits oiling. So let me tear this apart, get some more compressed air, get everything cleaned up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I've got this cleaned up. And you can see that this gear is still in good shape. I must have replaced this at some point in time. But I don't see any wear and tear on those. You know, and this has already been through the hot parts washer and some compressed air, and I still got some goop. But again, like I said, every time you take this apart, there's more layers of dirt and gunk. You know, uh, there's just enough room. For, it doesn't seem to bother the unit. The unit doesn't care. It's just nasty to work on. So I've unplugged these. And these just kind of slide and lock into each other. I can't do it one-handed, I don't think. Come on. Nope. It goes the other way. There we go. So you've got to take these apart and then slide this off. And then the hard part is getting them back through on the new piece. There's some assembly required. I don't know why they don't do this at the factory. But this case half here, or housing... What do they call it? Oh, of course, it's a kappa. That's exactly what I thought it was. It comes with, there's a little pin that needs to be pressed into the case. Excuse me, pin that needs to be pressed into the kappa. Uh, if you're Swedish, and I'm not saying that right, I apologize. I'm just a stupid ass American. All right, so what I found is because it's an interference fit, it's easier to heat up the case a little bit and then tap in that stud. I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, I got all but one of my wires pushed back through. So this last back lead, they were nice enough to leave you just enough room 
to fit it back through there. I mean, it's tight. Um, anyway, so this is the pin. It actually holds the uh, worm gear in place right there. So it's steady as the, uh, the actual worm gear itself um, turns it and, and pumps oil to the oil pump. So that's that. And this is how the housing comes. So I've got that spot right there and in a nice little baggie, I've got this pin and it is a super tight fit. So I found that heating this and letting the magnesium expand and then tapping that in does a really good job. And then it's just a reverse of putting everything back together like you found it and cleaner. <laughs> all right, so I've got that pin pressed in. I've got all the wires pushed through and they are on this side. There's a little channel right here that these need to ride in. And then this clamp, once we get the motor, or the electric motor installed, this will uh, hold these in place. Actually, it goes like that, and they'll go over and over. All right, moving right along. Okay, there's a receptacle down there for where the uh, oil pickup goes. Make sure that's in there. Moves correctly. Got a uh, gasket that'll lay in here. I forgot which way. Anyway. So the gasket goes in, motor sure. goes on, and then just buttoned everything up. I, I think that's about as detailed as we need to get with this. Um, I'll just get you right back to the very end, but it really is just that straightforward. So easy peasy, not to hurt. I think MSRP on this piece right here is like 65 or 70 bucks. It's not cheap, but uh, it could be worse. Uh, but everything else looks good in here. So we're just swapping this and Put it back in service. All right, just a friendly reminder, install your bar stud first. I just had to take this, the screws out of the housing and uh, screw it in. Let me find my old part. So it screws in, oops, that's the outside. So you screw that in first and then you lay everything down on top of it. So your first two steps are installing that pin for the oil gear and uh, your stud save you a few minutes hopefully y'all got that um and that's it so i mean you're just all said and done this was 45 minutes and then include me stopping cleaning filming and everything else just to be ready to go i just got to install the warm gear uh, make sure you have a good set of snap ring pliers i bought cheap ones before and you know that one came off the truck much much better uh, as far as screw sequences uh, these are your short fine thread everything else is coarse except for oops um, this is a fine thread short fine thread long and then the rest of these are coarse thread that go into that's the only it's this is the one that's curious it's not threaded so that coarse bolt has to self tap everything else goes back into plastic that's coarse threaded okay y'all have a great day thanks for watching